Welcome to the dark and depth details about Thad HTM series. If you're new, go ahead and make sure you hit the subscribe and notification bell for more content like this. Today, it's time to talk about Dante and the Black Dragon Curse that is Midnight Salazar. First off, let's give you the backstory of the Black Dragon Curse and where it originated from. According to the story in Dante Hint in the movie 8, the final chapter, there were two dragons, but they were split in two by the first king of the sacred realm. Years later, the grand evil wizard Kanli Amakusa broke the seal to control a holy warrior named Yordo Yumazaki, using him as a pawn to eliminate his daughter Momiji for foiling his plans. Now, here's some information about Momiji that was recently given to us. It might give us some enlightenment on why Dante had the black dragon curse throughout the series. Momiji is a character from the Dante Hint in the movie series. She is the daughter of the movie 8 E's antagonist, Kan Lee Amakusa. Momiji debuted in the movie 8. In the story, she was resurrected through the power of Delvara Yazudo after the process of Trinity Alpha was finished. She learns that Kan Lee plans on using the powers of the Sacred Beast of Legend to rule over the Sacred Realm Kingdom as he originally planned thousands of years ago. Here is their backstory. 1,500 years ago, Momiji was a priestess given a duty to protect the sacred ruby of evolution from many, including her father, who seek it for evil purposes. She met a young holy warrior named Yordo, and they both fought together to protect which was good. However, Kan Lee saw this, and out of spite and his greedy ambitions, he used black magic to corrupt Yordo's mind to try to control him. Momiji suddenly learned about this and tried to reason with her father, but Kan Lee attempted to kill her. Using Yordo as a pawn, Kan Lee was successful on taking the Ruby of Evolution and sealing one of the Dragon Kings inside of it. Momiji challenges Yordo and regretfully kills him. Kan Lee then condemns her for being distracted. Momiji fails to defeat Kan Lee, thus he was able to rule over the Sacred Realm Kingdom for three years. Momiji was captured, humiliated, and was forced to serve under her father's rule. If she were to refuse, there was specific orders to kill her, as a result of treason. One day, Momiji meets Tetsuruji Yamato, one of Kan Lee's students and a well-known blacksmith. He makes her a sword that would defeat even the powers of the Ruby of Evolution itself. However, the sword itself was cursed. The sword is called Delvara, given the same name of the entity that possessed her and her reincarnation Kiyomi Tokiyama. Momiji uses this sword to fight Kan Lee, but she died after defeating him in the movie 8. History repeats itself. After Dante returned to the Sacred Realm to challenge Midnight, Momiji explains Princess Ruby and Kiyomi that they're the only ones who can save Dante. She told them to use the sacred box of rituals and purify it as Midnight is hit with the light of Princess Ruby's spiritual powers, which worked. In the end of the movie 8, Momiji's legacy is shared with the Sacred Realm Kingdom as well as Dante and Kiyomi's victory over Midnight Salazar, the Black Dragon of Annihilation. Let's now talk about how Dante got the Black Dragon Curse in the first place. We know already he didn't get it until the movie 2. Dante hint in the movie 2 took place two months after the first movie. According to the story, Kazumi held him captive in an underground facility while she had the Grand Executioner Taimugoshi fight the Slayer Squad Guild. Kazumi manipulated Dante into believing that Jai Rei could not be trusted. This is because of Rujinra's lie he told to Kazumi years prior. Dante was seduced by Kazumi as she used black magic to control him, but the seal of Midnight Salazar was broken in the process before Kazumi could something about it after learning that fact. Dante busts out of the facility. The battle against Taimugoshi ended as Dante decapitates him and tries to fight Kiyomi and the others, but Jai Rei knocks him unconscious and takes him to an underground lair for until further notice while Kazumi escapes. Dante hints in the movie 3 is where the Black Dragon is revealed to Rujinra. Dante returns to get revenge on the Slayer Squad. Believing they betrayed him, unknowings to him, Rujinra has come back as well. At age 17, 
Dante forms his own independent guild called the Urban Legend Unit to eliminate all the Slayers. However, he's informed by Kiyomi that Rujinra has returned and they should stop him, believing he announced a tournament. However, Kiyomi has no idea who the real sponsor is. It becomes later to everyone's surprise that Dante is revealed to be the tournament sponsor. Dante fights through the tournament defeating opponents like Kiyomi, Jairei, and Kazuya. Rujinra fights through the tournament as well defeating Kiara, Xena, and Christina. The tournament reaches its final round as Dante and Rujinra fight for the second time since the first movie. Dante is nearly defeated, but the Black Dragon within awakens and instantly, Rujinra is defeated. After the tournament, the Sacred Realm Kingdom as well as the Slayer Squad exiles Dante. Meanwhile, the movie 3 post credit scene shows Dante returning back to the real world. Suddenly, he hears an unknown voice in his head telling him to kill Rujinra Kazamura as his eyes glow red. Dante hints in the movie 4 is where Dante is granted the opportunity for redemption after what he's done. Kiyomi makes a deal with the king to bring back Dante after hearing about the forbidden portal being open. Fortunately, Dante was able to return under the condition that he must try what he can do to keep the supernatural powers he has at bay until Regenera is gone and he's able to get rid of it entirely. He uses the Sword of Kazuo to defeat an ancient warrior named Reiji. The original owner of the Sword of Kazuo passed down through various generations. Here we are at last. This is where Midnight Salazar physically debuts. Dante Hind in the movie 5 takes place two years after the movie 3 and 4. Rujinra returns with a group of assassins and destroys the Slayer's mansion looking for Dante. Meanwhile... What's this? What is Regenera planning this time? Dante participates in the tournament Regenera hosts, but ends up losing to Kiyomi by default after he was unable to compete due to him struggling with the Black Dragon Curse. Somehow, he ends up at a castle where Kazumi fights Regenera's minions. Kazumi uses black magic to transform him into a dragon. She escapes, but Midnight begins to tail her until Trinity Alpha sends Dante back to the real world. <laughs> After doing some studying of the Black Dragon Curse, Rujinra puts a plan in motion to defeat Dante. However, Midnight speaks into Dandy's mind once again as he realizes that they both share a mutual hatred towards Rujinra. Kazumi secretly sends Dante a letter telling him to head to Kiru Temple if he wants to know the truth behind the Black Dragon Curse. Curious to know, Dante takes her upon her offer and looks for her. You fool! You'll pay for this with your life! No one will stop me. My resurrection is at hand. I shall reign supreme once again. The world will know the power of... Midnight Salazar. Midnight, Salazar takes over Dante as he head to Kairu Temple, where Kazumi just finished fighting Jai Rei and Natsu, plus clarifying her intentions after learning about Rujinra's 20-plus-year lie. 
Dante arrives at the temple and defeats Natsu, nearly killing Jai Rei and destroying everything in sight. Midnight defeats Kazumi and escapes not hearing the truth. In Dante Hint in the movie 6, Dante becomes once again a target for the Sacred Realm Kingdom. This time, Rujinra uses his family's legacy to side with King Forest Josiji as the kingdom believes that Dante has broken his promise to control his powers back at the real world. Dante tries to control Midnight, but Midnight takes control because of his lust for vengeance. Dante hints in the movie 7, a major plot twist happens in the story. Pay attention, the subject matter of what is about to be told is this, Dante isn't in the movie 7, I repeat, Dante, the main protagonist of the self-titled series, is not in the movie 7. You're wondering how is that possible, do you remember the ending of the movie 6? Here's what happened after Dante left.
Dante began to travel around the world participating in tournaments, unknowings to him. Midnight is in the real world as well. In the movie 7, the two worlds merge as an exiled prince returns. Do you remember in the beginning of this video that there were two dragons, but they were split into two? Let's talk about the other dragon, Cuyo Salazar, Midnight's incarnation in Momiji's history story. One of the beasts were sealed inside the ruby of evolution. This is the beast. The person who carries the beast inside him is Tori Yozigi, the exiled prince of the Sacred Realm Kingdom and Ruby Yozigi's twin brother. He returns for the throne and uses his authority to merge the two realms. The person pulling the strings behind this is none other than a resurrected Conley Amakusa who seeks revenge against the Sacred Realm Kingdom for banishing him to the underworld. However, another person emerges in the midst of the chaos, Kaguya Maroka. Why all the sudden Prince Tor decided to come back after all these years? The reason remains unknown, but it's clear his objective was defeat Dante, believing he still has the Black Dragon Curse. He kills King Forrest and becomes the new king and exiles Queen Sharon in order to execute his plans. Unknown to him, Dante is nowhere to be found, so he uses power given to him by the Beast Cuyo to merge the two worlds by hosting a worldwide tournament. However, Jurgo challenges him to avenge the king. However, the Holy Warrior dies in battle. The Sacred Realm Kingdom still hunts for Dante under Tor's orders, originally given to them by King Forrest. But unknown to anyone, Dante is on the other side of the world. The major plot twist is here. Remember, Dante is not on the movie 7, confused about what's going on. It's about time to clarify a lot of things because this is where the biggest confusion is thrown into play. In the beginning of the movie 7, it shows what actually happened right after the Slayer Squad Guild disbanded. They fought against the rest of Ruginra's remaining minions. Midnight is shown destroying everything. The prologue is what threw a lot of people off. It says after transforming into Midnight, Dante walks in a forest aimlessly. At first, the movie 60's ending was considered non-canon, but the movie 8 tied up the story together. In Dante hints in the movie 8, it was revealed that Midnight disguised himself as Dante to trick everyone into believing Dante himself was causing all the destruction which led Jai Ray to sacrifice himself. Meanwhile, in the movie 7, a fortune teller named Mia Granslot came to Queen Sharon about Midnight and Kuyo, saying they mustn't fight or the Sacred Realm Kingdom will be plunged into darkness forever. Kuyo summons his army to wage war against Midnight and challenges Dante. The Sacred Realm Kingdom is now on high alert as they take heed Maya's words. Three days later, Midnight returns as he accepts Kaya's challenge. Queen Sharon tries to stop her son from the abomination that uses him, but she ends up being reduced to ashes. Now, this is where the series itself has reached its climax considering the Black Dragon Curse. Midnight is hellbent on killing Tora, Khan Lee, and whoever opposes him. Kiyomi Tokiyama was one of the few who was fortunate enough to survive Midnight Salazar. 
Conley challenges Midnight and was killed. However, the story wasn't over just yet. Dante returns home when he notices the changes in the Earth's atmosphere. Later on near the end of the movie 8, Dante learns he is the reincarnation of Yordo Yumazaki and defeats Tori Yoziji. Dante then challenges Midnight himself. Ultimately, Dante defeats Midnight, but he becomes possessed again and now Princess Ruby and the Sacred Realm Kingdom try to find out what they can do to help him. Midnight takes control of Dante's body and attempts to destroy the entire world, but Momiji used her spiritual powers along with Princess Ruby to stop him, giving Dante a chance to resist Midnight's influence. But, 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 why? 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 Because, Yordo, I wanted to protect you. Oh, 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 oh. I, 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 see, 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 see. Now, now, now. <laughs> And there you have it. That was the final ending of DATM series as it ends with Dante being free from the Black Dragon Curse. So, you are wondering this right here. What about Prince Tora? Didn't he have the Black Dragon Curse too? Yes, yes he did. But Princess Ruby purified that during their battle before Dante came back to fight against Midnight. Well, that's all for today. We've learned about the origins of the Black Dragon Curse, the story with Dante and Tora's involvement having it and how it was lifted. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. Deuces!